Hey guys, Alec Pierce, scuba, vintage scuba. Yeah, let's talk about old stuff. Not me. <laughs> anyway, here we are. We're back. Uh, Kevin's doing, uh, we're doing a, a whole bunch of new vintage scuba episodes. I have so much vintage scuba stuff that do, we haven't shown you, that you haven't seen, that's not in any museum. I know them all. I know all the guys, Carl and Rich and Dan and Rob and all those guys that have good vintage uh, scuba museums. A lot of the stuff isn't in them. It will be. It will be. Uh, I'm selling a lot of it and some of those guys are buying it. But let's talk about this. This is kind of interesting, okay? Now, we've already touched bases and I've already shown you some magazines um, about the do-it-yourself craze in the 60s. I call it the do-it-yourself craze. Uh, but that's not really right. It wasn't so much a do-it-yourself craze as it was a do-it-yourself have to. <laughs> yeah. In the 50s and 60s, if you wanted to be a scuba diver, you didn't go down to the local dive store and buy a scuba outfit. There wasn't a local dive store. Yeah, uh, my local dive store was Honest Archie in New York City. Yeah, I live in Ontario, north of Toronto, north of Toronto. The original <clears throat> Amazon. I send him money and he sends you gear. Uh, it was great, actually. But um, anyway, uh, so, so the point is that if you wanted a certain thing, if you wanted a knife, a scuba diving knife or a scuba diving light, made a lot of lights and so on, you made it. You built it yourself. And you had two choices. You either sat down and you either went to your garage and you, and you got a bunch of parts out you think might work and you made it. I'll give you an example just very quickly, Kevin. Sorry about this. A light. I made a dive light one, one time. Now, today they're called canister lights. Big fancy thing and a thousand dollars is a pretty fair price for a good canister light. LEDs and batteries that last for years, you know. Anyway, I had a canister light back in the 50s that I built. I took a sealed beam from a tractor, a six volt sealed beam, four and a half inch sealed beam, and I soldered two wires in the back. And then I took a soup can, and in the soup can I dropped one of those six volt batteries with little springs on top, you know, and I soldered the two wires to the two batteries. And then I filled the can with tar. Yeah, we had some tar around the garage. And I poured tar all over the back of the light. Now, it was on. There was no switch. So you had to do this kind of just before you went diving. And the light came on, and it was pretty good. So then I fastened the soup can with the battery onto my weight belt. With the light in my hand, off I went. It was pretty good. A canister light. And when the dive was over, if the batteries lasted, I would just cut the wires, turn it off, <laughs> and start again. Now, that's the kind of thing we did. But the other way, so you do it yourself. The other way is you could, you could go and, and find plans. You could find, you could find articles on how to build things. Now, we're not talking Google. We're not talking YouTube. You go to YouTube and how do I build this? You'll find about 15 or 2,000 videos. Not back in those days. No, no, no. In those days, you had to watch for magazines that would have what were called DIY, do-it-yourself articles in them. Here's an example. Science and Mechanics, one of the very best magazines for, for do-it-yourself, for scuba divers. And there you go. I built that sub. I built that sub right there. Almost killed me, but that's another story. I'd right there. It was made out of, uh, uh, out of a hot water tank. Yeah, and it had an automotive battery, yeah, and a starter motor inside, and a switch. Yeah, I built that right from the plans. Yeah, there's another one. Build your own submarine. How about that? Now, there's a, a two-man wet sub. A wet sub is one where you get wet. Eh? Mind you, a lot of subs you get wet. But anyway, um, the point is that you put on your scuba gear, climbed into it, and off you went. And you're breathing on scuba. But I didn't build this one, but there you go. Now, there were also interesting articles on building your own scuba diving equipment. That is, so you could breathe underwater. Now, there's, there's, there, here's one, and this, this is from Popular Science. Popular Science is still around. Science and Mechanics and Popular Mechanics is no longer with us, unfortunately, but Popular Science is. It's a different magazine. Yeah, it's all about cameras and computers and, uh, and drones and stuff like that. But back in the old days, all kinds of articles. How to build a coffee table for your mom. And, uh, and the fact that they're thinking maybe pretty soon they'll be able to put a man in space, stuff like that. And in here, there's an article on building your own <clears throat> beginner's diving outfit. Now, this is pretty neat. <laughs> you see, there's a diver on there, and they're making, it's a little bit fantastic. This is a drawing, not a picture, of this diver down there, lucky guy, in crystal clear water, bringing up an outboard motor. Now, you can see it's pretty fantastic because the water's never like that. 
Uh, and you never, anyways, long story. So here he's going. But you notice he's a, he has a mask and it's something in his mouth so he can breathe, and there's a hose running to the surface. And there's a guy up in the boat, and the guy in the boat's got a pump, a bump, a bump, a bump, making sure that the guy downstairs has got air. I don't know what he does when he has to go for lunch. Anyway, you can build that. There's the plans in there to build it. Pretty neat, huh? Now, later, uh, you could actually get plans. This is a fantastic magazine. This one was very popular. This magazine, which sold for 25 cents, 25 cents in 1953, this magazine is probably worth $100 now because of the neat article inside and the fantastic picture on the front, which shows a guy in scuba, on scuba. Yeah, but he built that scuba outfit. Yeah, you go to your local war surplus store, you have a war surplus store around the corner, right? We did. Yeah, but not anymore. But anyway, you go to your, and you, buy, you get a couple of tanks, and you get some uh, gas mask hoses, and you get the right valve, and you follow the plans in here. And the plans in here show you exactly how to build that, that, that scuba outfit. Diving lung, they call it. Yeah, dive, build your own diving lung, and you can be just like him. Fantastic. Now, this was really neat. Of course, these are North American publications, uh, United States and uh, popular all through the United States and Canada as well, and other countries too, I'm sure. I got them as well eventually, but these are all American publications. And unfortunately, there's a tendency for us here in North America to be a little bit, uh, a little bit haughty. You know, we invented this, we invented that, and I got news for you, we didn't invent very much. Um, uh, and, and so, well, we got magazines with articles and on, on how to build scuba gear. We're way ahead of those other people. Careful. Practical Mechanics. Practical Mechanics, January 1955. One pence. Now, one pence would be about two bits. 25 cents. One pence for this magazine. And look what's on the front cover. Yeah. And that sure looks like a scuba diver to me. And he sure has a scuba tank on it and hoses and all that. Ah, pretty neat, huh? And, and, and what is it, the title on here? Practical Mechanics. But you see what it says across the top? You know what it says right up there? Making an aqua lung. <laughs> Absolutely. So if you buy this magazine and you could buy the coffee table for your mom and, and how to make a good speaker and, and how to make a, a timer for your chickens, eventually you'll get to these pages. Making an aqualung. Pretty style. Yeah. When you breathe in, it has an accent. <laughs> anyway, no, well, there's the same idea. You go to your local war surplus store, you pick this up and you pick that up and it actually has detailed plans in here on how to hook it up and, and shows you how to make weights. Look at that, Kevin. I think I've told you the story how I made my first weights with a little wooden pieces nailed to my, my father's workbench. I poured molten lead into them. Oh, he was upset, but they were good weights. Two pound weight was a two pound weight. How to, everything, it's all in there. Oh, don't be so quick to, uh, to uh, just say, hey, we're way ahead. No, no, no. 1955 from the UK, from England, Great Britain, if you like. Yeah, making an aqua lung. There you go. A little bit of history for you and into vintage scuba. It's interesting. I think it's interesting. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Talk to you soon, Alec Pierce Scuba. Vintage scuba.